Thank you. Thank you for that wonderful, warm welcome. And uh, it's uh, very comfortable for me to be in the company of many old associates here in the audience and uh, some other associates I feel very <coughs> sentimental about. One's back there, one's over there, and one's up there. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the selection committee's unanimous choice for this year's Lifetime Achievement Award in Education is Dr. George von Kaeferfallen. The video contains ample evidence that Dr. Von Tee is one of those rare individuals who has a natural ability to inform and inspire, to educate and motivate, and most remarkably, to endure. Clearly, he has a very special talent. His presence is articulate. It's a charming accent. And a characteristic that's often overlooked in contemporary society. He actually knows his subject matter. <laughs> Dr. Theodore von Karman, who many here will remember, said, quote, scientists study the world as it is. Engineers create the world as it has never been. A more succinct expression is, science is about what is, engineering is about what can be. Now, Dr. Von T is often referred to or listed as a rocket scientist. And I'm confident that he does know some rocket science. But most contemporary work in rocketry is done by engineers, creating what can be for spaceflight or as it has never been. In reviewing the many things that uh, Dr. von Tiesenhausen has accomplished, I note that his innovation, his designs, his papers, and his, his uh, patents demonstrate that he is and has been a person who imagines what can be and he has the skills to convert that imagination into reality. He is, in my view, an engineer. <laughs> that combination of abilities is what enables him to entertain and inspire young minds to understand the fascination of our home planet and the space around it, and make them believe that they can be a part of it, a part of that excitement, and they can contribute to a bigger and better tomorrow. Dr. Von Tee, it is a privilege to join Dr. Barnard in presenting to you the Lifetime Award in Education 
in grateful appreciation for your years of dedication to training space camp tra trainees, your love for the wonder of space. Mr. Armstrong, dear friends, dear members of the Space and Rocket Center family, to which I had the honor to belong for many years, <coughs> I'd like to thank you for the great honor that you have bestowed on me here today. I'm still quite a overwhelmed by this. When I started teaching almost 24 years ago at the Space Academy and Advanced Academy, I had a goal. That goal was that between the time my students entered the classroom and the time they left, that I would be able to touch their minds and to make a difference. My goal was to make a difference. I never lectured to my students. I walked before them and talked with them. I never treated them as children, but with, with respect like adults. They enjoyed that and we're happy, and so was I. Over the years, more than 30,000 students passed through my classroom. Students of all ages, from early teenage years to adults in their 60s and 70s. They came from our country, and from about 30 different countries around the globe. All this would not have been possible without the support I received from management and staff and friends at the Space and Rocket Center. Number one of my support, our former CEO, Mr. Larry Capps, with always his friendly support and the many privileges he gave me. Then there is Mike Prashbaum, who started me off 24 years ago, provided me classrooms and equipment that sometimes worked. And when things broke down, he sent help right away. And then there are two extraordinary ladies without whom I would have never lasted as long as I did. Their names are Mr. Sarah Hubbard and Mrs. Samantha Pedersen. They were assigned to me in addition to their regular jobs and were dedicated to my lectures they didn't only take care of my stuff, but of me, too. We became good friends. They became good friends to me and to my family. I wish them all the luck for their great future at the Rocket Center. Now, since I gave up my job a few months ago as a lecturer, 
what is a 96-year-old man going to do of, without a job <laughs> other than carrying out the garbage? <laughs> I have already a project in progress and others are waiting for me. But my situation is best de described by my all-time favorite American poet, Robert Frost. Robert Frost, when he walked through the dense falls of his home state, Vermont, had this to say. Robert Frost said, the woods are lovely, dark, and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. That's exactly my situation. I still have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep. Again, I thank you for the great honor you bestowed on me here today. Thank you very much.